After e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, the scotch game is on the board, so you take the pawn and knight takes back, and now we go on with bishop c5. So in the previous videos we've been going through a little bit of everything, in this video we're going to go through this move, knight to b3 immediately, attacking the bishop. Okay, bishop goes back to b6, we don't want to trade that bishop for that knight, obviously. And now there's plenty of options, let's start with this one, bishop to e2, well we're going to go through a4, Bishop c4, knight c3, very normal moves. Bishop e2 is there to castle as soon as possible for the white player, obviously. And also because the bishop in c4 is weirdly placed, since he loses the tempo due to knight to e5, thematic move. But we'll get to that one later. So after bishop e2 now, black starts an attack. Queen to h4 is perfectly safe to play. We're targeting the square f2, we're also targeting this pawn. So after castling... Queen takes pawn is not advisable, so castling was the best thing to do for black, uh, for white. Queen is not advisable because obviously rook to e1 threatens to pin the queen to the king, so we're going to play knight to f6. And basically we're going to be transferring the attack over the square h2, especially with the arrival of the knight. So knight f6, and after knight to c3 developing and protecting this pawn, since we're targeting it, knight to e5. And now it's already big problems for the white player. Obviously the move bishop f4, thematic move to protect the square h2 so cannot happen now because of the queen. So the white player will have to do something. Let's look at these two options. One of them, g3, attacking the queen. This now surrenders a weakness on the light squares. However, you may think that the white player does still have the light square bishop, so he, with some maneuver, maybe rook e1, bishop f1, bishop g2, he can just fianchetto that bishop and play a normal game. It's just too late. Queen to, a, queen to h3 is happening now, and there is no time for the white player to play rook e1 with bishop f1 idea, simply because after rook e1, knight g4 is happening, and the white player will have to give up a lot of material. So here, what to do? Two moves we're going to look at. One of them, let's say knight to f3, with the idea of going to g2, and you go on with the plan. Knight f to g4, threatening mate in h2. The bishop is forced to take, take back with the knight, and now the only move is queen takes knight. And then you're going to carry on like this. You might not be checkmating, but you're winning the game very easily. In this position, as mentioned, bishop f3 doesn't work. What happens after the best move, engine move, is knight to d4. The idea is obviously to be able to go to f3 with the knight. And actually get to neutralize our attack. Now here we give the bishop for this knight. We have to get rid of that knight. And after the queen takes back, the knight goes to g4. And we're threatening the same thing. White's best move would be bishop takes and after knight takes back, threatening mate. In this case, why was knight d4 the best move? Well, because the knight was threatening to go to f3, neutralizing our attack, and it forced us to give away our lovely bishop in b6 for the queen, meaning we don't have the bishop attacking f2, and now the white queen is protecting the square f2, which means the white player can play rook to e1, this is the best move. So after queen h2 check, king moves, we don't have the checkmate in f2 because our bishop is not supporting, and the white queen is protecting f2. So let's continue now. We, we're still winning. We're not, we're not checkmating, but we're winning. Now the best move for black is c5. This is a beautiful move. He's sacrificing the pawn. Of course, the white player can't go to e3 because of the knight. We want the queen to go to d2. What happens if the queen simply takes the pawn? Okay, that loses immediately. b6. Boom. Game over. Because right now, the queen has nowhere to go on, on the diagonal that protects the square in f2 and we're going to be checkmating in f2 you might argue the queen can go back to d4 but now bishop a6 check and this is checkmate to happen soon the white player will have to block if he blocks with a knight this is checkmate same thing if he blocks with the rook still checkmate on the back rank and obviously knight to b5 you can just take it then c4 comes but then you can just take it, it comes with check the queen can never really move so if queen take then you're going here so in this position, after the move c5, what if the queen goes to d2, still protecting f2 and avoiding the capture of the poisonous c5 pawn? Okay, b6 comes anyway. We want to play bishop a6, winning move. There is no way to avoid this. If white plays knight to b5 with the idea of supporting it with c4 and neutralizing the bishop from that diagonal, then we simply play castle. And after c4, defending the knight, d5 comes. And now, obviously, taking with this pawn means you're going to win the game with bishop f5. Nothing stops you from, and I mean, and actually nothing stops you from playing bishop d3 and winning the game. And in this position, if white takes with the c pawn, well, in this case, change of plans. Knight to e5 comes now with the threat of queen h1 and checkmate to follow when we go to f3. 
especially with the arrival of the bishop over the square h3 afterwards. It will be checkmate with the bishop. White's best move in this position is queen to f4. But look, position is still evaluated minus 8, or like some crazy number like that. Black's best move now is bishop to g4, stopping the king from going anywhere. And we're threatening checkmate. So the white player is forced to take the bishop with the queen and then knight takes back. And you take it from there. So in this position, after the move b6, we mention what happened after knight to b5. So that doesn't work. The best move according to the engine is a4. So black goes on with castling. And after rook to a3, these are all computer moves. This is like, I've, I've set the white player to play only the best moves to see if there's any way to defend this. But obviously there isn't. Black goes on with d5. We want to open the files since the opponent king is not safe. When the pawn takes, queen h1 check, king moves, rook e8 check, king moves, and now queen f3 check. Queen cannot block since you're also attacking that square with the rook. Knight cannot block because knight f2 is mate. So after rook blocks, knight check, king moves, bishop to g4. The best move according to the engine now is, is queen to e3, but you're just gonna take it and then carry on. If, let's say, white, just let's play a move, d6, for instance, just to see what exactly we're threatening here is check, only move king takes, and now check, king moves here, then check, if rook blocks, then check, king moves here, and then queen takes here, would be mate, but even if the king moves, doesn't make much difference, queen g1, I mean, you can take it from here. So let's make a recap so that we understand that properly, and then we can move on to the following line, d4, take, take, base c5, Knight b3, bishop b6. Okay, and the variation with bishop b2, one of the most popular moves. Queen h4, going for an attack on f2. Castle, knight f6, knight c3. And now knight e5. So what happens after the best move, which is queen to d2, the idea is to go to f4 and remove the strong initiative of the black player. Black's best move is h6, stopping the queen from being able to go to g5. So after queen to f4, take, take, and now d6 to protect the knight. Obviously, if white takes, we're happy. White will be giving the bishop pair for no reason. So after rook a to d1, best move is bishop to d7, developing. And now we're still threatening this pawn. So let, let's not forget, if white plays knight to d5, seems to be making sense. The idea is, uh, is obviously to take this bishop. <coughs> we don't really care. You just, stay, you can just win the pawn. There's no compensation. When the knight takes back, you can take with the a pawn, open the file for the rook. So that's just a free pawn, free central pawn. No, there's no point in looking at this variation. Let's see more setups. White playing a4, thematic move, the idea of trapping the bishop, so you play a6, a5, bishop a7, and you stay on that diagonal forever. What happens after knight d5 comes now with a threat on this pawn? The threat of a fork. Okay, take. And now it's advisable to take with the pawn because, you see, taking with the rook, you might argue that the, the rook is going to stay on the open file and maybe double up, so it seems to be making sense. But now knight to g6 attacks the bishop, Bishop shouldn't be defended like that because you can just take it. It's, I mean, it's terrible. Come on. So if the bishop moves back, bishop to c6 should be capturing this pawn because unless white wants to give up the exchange for no reason. So in this position, white taking with the pawn. Okay, castle. This is the most boring variation because white has played perfectly, but it really indicates how the knight b3 variation of the scotch isn't that good of a game and you should punish it so rook f to e1 rook f to e8 let's put the rooks on the open file now we do have the bishop pair so a move like you know you're not supposed to memorize moves as i say in every single video for example i'm not going to go through a line like knight d3 because you can just take it right and win the bishop pair and go on to a better end game so the bishop doesn't have anywhere to go h5 doesn't make sense g4 and f3 you can take it c4 g uh, b5 not accessible so after bishop f1 i'm going for a fianchetto maybe Knight to g4, putting pressure on this square. So after the best move, which is take, take, and now rook to d2, protecting this square enough. Black plays g5. Bishop has to move, and now f5. We're threatening to play f4 and trap the bishop. So h3, a4 comes anyway. And now obviously it's not advisable to take the knight, because after taking the bishop, there's going to be a lot of pressure over f2, enough to win material. And have an incredibly strong pawn. So after bishop retreats, we end the game like this. Knight, did, knight take f2. And it's weird because you might wonder, how come are we giving too many pieces for a rook and a pawn? But now we play rook 2e1. 
in the light square bishop, the dark square bishop is paralyzed, and we're planning to play bishop b5 and finalize the attack over the pinned piece and win the game. So after c4 now, stopping bishop b5 from happening, bishop e3, keeping the pin, and nothing helps. If white plays g3, then simply bishop takes h3, the king can't move, game over very soon. If white plays g4, stopping the arrival of our bishop, then take on passant, and when the bishop takes back, bishop h3 will do. And you might argue we've still done a piece, but even when the king moves, take the rook, and when the bishop takes your bishop, check. And you're up the exchange. Taking the bishop doesn't work because of this move. Ha ha ha. So let's make a recap and go to another line. d4, take, take, and now knight c3. Okay, bishop b6. What happens after early knight c3? Ignoring the perspective of castling soon. Okay, knight f6, developing, and now bishop to g5. So we're going to look at what happens when the white pair will try eventually to castle on the long side. Okay, castle. And now, don't be scared of the move knight d5, which seems to be capitalizing on our knight in f6 and, you know, the knight is pinned and the usual thing. Knight takes, pawn takes, bishop h6, everything is devastated. This is actually just fine, believe it or not. In fact, this is completely punished with bishop to f2. This is very basic. If king takes, you go knight e4, check. King e1, and now take with the queen. Helps you develop. And you don't really have to care about the knight going to c7 with an attack on the rook, try to compensate in that way, simply because of d5, and then rook a8. So even if the knight goes back, for instance, you're still gonna play rook e8. And the bishop can never develop because you have queen takes in g2, game over. So if knight takes rook, rook e8, there's no need to even look at this now. So in this position of the bishop, f2 check. If king goes to d2, exactly the same thing happens, knight e4 check. And then you capture, the knight is also protecting f2, so you can capture the bishop completely for free. And last but not least, after the check, if king goes to e2, the bishop goes back to b6. So does that mean that now the white player will be able to do what he wanted? No, because after knight takes, check, bishop ta uh, pawn takes, attacking the bishop. The bishop has to move now, whatever he moves, let's say with an attack on our rook, which was the whole point, d5 just wins for black, because now... Bishop to g4 wins the game. You're winning the queen. It, how can the white player stop that? Queen takes in d5. Doesn't really work. You know, it's looking for a swap and everything, of course. But now black plays the stunning queen e7. Boom. Completely careless of the bishop being able to take the rook. Because now bishop to g4 comes. And the bishops are attacking these squares. So the king is forced to go either on the d file or on e1. Either way, let's say the king goes to e1. Okay, simply recapture this bishop. So if the king goes to e1, simply recapture this bishop and get ready to play rook to d8 with a crashing attack. Position evaluated minus 6 or something like that. Or minus 7. So if the bishop now goes to e2, for instance. Okay, rook to d8, development. Okay, queen moves. Knight to d4. This is such an insane move. Because, well, a queen can't take because it's very well protected. And as soon as the knight takes, the square e form becomes accessible. And the white player doesn't have any checks. If bishop takes our bishop, for example, then queen takes with check. Bishop goes back. The queen is still protecting the bishop, right? But now knight to c2 will do the job. Because the queen is forced to sacrifice herself. Unless white plays king to f1. But then you do this. Okay, let's restart so we can look, we can finish that line and then we can move on to some other ideas and then close this video. Knight to b3, bishop to b6, and we're looking at the early knight c3. Okay, knight f6, and now bishop to g5. We're looking at this idea. As mentioned, we castle, and the move knight d5 doesn't work. Although it looks very intuitive. White best move is queen to d2, allowing development of castle, and so what happens now? We play h6, and now some other insane line is about to happen. You see, the bishop is not just able to go to h4. Because now black plays the insane move, knight takes e4. If bishop takes uh, our queen, we take the queen. 
and when the knight takes us, we take back and we're up a pawn. So let's say, for example, knight takes, rook takes, and after knight to d5, attacking that bishop, okay, rook check, bishop blocks, knight d4, game over. Unless the white player goes to c3 again. But then we're going to c2, right? And win material. If the knight goes back to e3, well, okay, rook takes e3. Sacrificing the exchange when we get taken, knight c2, and now the king moves to allow the rook to defend the other rook. But the funny thing is that now we can play this check. And the king can't really go backwards because, well, when we take the rook, then the, the knight will be able to escape. And also there's an attack on this knight. Um, the king can't move to e1 because of the knight, obviously. So after king f3, bishop takes knight, we're completely winning. There is no way, to, there's no way for white to save the rook, maybe by playing rook d1, attacking the bishop, because... You will simply remove the bishop, you're doing just fine. And in this position, after rook e8 check, earlier we went through bishop e2, what happens after the knight just goes back to e3, and maybe plans on castling. Okay, take the knight. Pawn takes back, rook takes check. There's no compensation for this pawn. King goes to f2, okay, rook back to e7. And black is up two pawns. No compensation. If Rook wants to trade, okay, trade. You're, you're, you're just winning the endgame easily. So from the start, we can look at this line again so that we can understand it better. Okay, so uh, bishop b6, early knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, castle. Queen to d2, attack the bishop immediately. So the bishop goes back, and uh, in the next move we're going to see bishop takes knight. But in this case, as, well, as mentioned, we play knight e4. Of course, if the knight takes in e4, then you can take the bishop here. So you, you're up a central pawn, you're planning to play rook e8, you're winning. What happens after the move queen f4? Now, I'm aware that this is one of my repertoire opening videos. Unlike the usual endgame strategies, and maybe tactical, more entertaining videos. This is one of the boring ones, it's long, it's tough, but it will be very rewarding when you will stop losing to the scotch. Now, why am I saying this? I think I'm just trying to prove a point to myself and to you as well. When I say that these videos about, when I say that these long videos about repertoire don't have to be boring. The move that is about to happen now is an absolute shocker. Black's best move now here is knight takes c3. Boom! It's an incredible move. It doesn't look like there is anything as a compensation for the queen that we're giving to our opponent. There is no checkmate, there is no trap or trick. There is simply a better endgame. You see, if our opponent takes our queen now, then we don't even recapture anything, we just, we just play rook to e8 check. Now there's two options, either bishop to e2, or king to d2, king d1 is not accessible. So if bishop to e2, then simply knight takes the bishop with an attack on the queen. But now it looks like the queen can just move away, let's say queen to h4. And there is no discovered checks where you can attack the queen and capture it back. However, you play knight g3 check, king can't move to f1, must go to, well let's say king to d1, you're still gonna take the rook. King to d2 to allow the rook to defend each other, Still, knight takes, and after the rook takes, well, if rook to e1 trying to, trying to trade with our rook, you can simply recapture this bishop, you're protected by the knight. If the rook instead goes straight to take up knight, then take the bishop, rook to e1 now, playing the best moves, d6, and after c3 with the idea of playing knight d4, simply play bishop to d7, and you're winning this endgame. You have rook and two bishops for a queen. And you don't have to worry about knight d4 coming now because you can just take it with the knight. Pawn takes and bishop a5, you're making it even easier. So back at this position, when we play this standard move, knight takes c3, and the bishop took our queen, we continue with rook e8 check. And obviously we're not going to go through bishop e2. What happens after king to d2? Okay, check again. If queen takes, then we take back. And then we're simply up a pawn. But, the funny thing is, if queen takes, rook takes, we up a pawn, but where is the, da the dark square bishop going to go? e7, f6, g5, h4, they're all controlled by black pieces, so we're going to be winning this game. 
So after knight e4 check, king has to move. Obviously, after king to c1, for instance, well, king to d1, you'd be able to play knight takes in f2, check, take the rook. And not only that, if you play this move, the king cannot go anywhere on the file of the rook. He, will, he might have to go here to d2 or maybe c1, but then you, you also have this, this threat. So you got a very strong bishop. So after this check, let's see king to c1. Okay, you simply recapture this bishop just to start. And now you're threatening knight to f2 with the threat of bishop e3 winning the game. This cannot be stopped. Let's say bishop to d3 to attack the knight quickly. Knight to f2 is coming. The rook can't go to e1, you'll take it. Any other move, you have this, this idea. This obviously will happen either way, even if the queen, even if the white had played this move, knight f2 here, it's even stronger. You are going to win the rook no matter what. So in this variation with bishop to d3, knight takes... What happens if queen to f3? We don't really have anything here, like bishop check, the king can go to b1. We don't have anything in a way that we don't have a checkmate. But first of all, let's take this rook. And then when white plays c3 with the idea of king c2 and allowing the rook to play, it's just too late. We're going to be perfectly able to play knight to f2. And when the bishop moves, d5 should end the game. Bishop g4 is a really strong threat. If h3 to stop that from happening, knight to c6. Remember, the position has been evaluated around minus 7 for a very long time now. Black's idea is to play knight e5 with an attack on the queen. If king to c2 now finally is trying to activate the rook, knight to e5 comes. So there's an attack on the queen. So after queen to, let's say, g3. Queen to g3 is not advisable because bishop f5 is a killer move. Queen to f4 does guard the square f5 to be honest but now you just play knight g6 we should be able to play bishop f5 now so when the queen moves and manages to still defend the bishop in e2 knight to h4 and now we will be able to take this bishop queen to g3 rook to e2 and uh, let's close the line here it's a torture so here we are back at this insane move when we took the knight ignoring our queen what happens if instead our opponent takes our knight because he's so good that he realizes all of that is going to happen well okay first of all check when the bishop blocks g5 forks bishop and queen there is nothing here you don't have a sacrifice because the queen is defending that queen to g3 well queen to g4 is not possible because when the pawn moves he's got an attack on the queen and yeah i mean queen to g3 same thing you're going to play king f8 and this stops our opponent from being able to move this bishop and you're going to win the bishop. If instead your opponent, let's say, does play queen to g4, then as mentioned, just play d6, it's an attack on the queen. If queen goes to h5, trying to be annoying, then take the, the bishop. There is nothing here. Position evaluated minus 7. Okay, queen takes pawn here, does, doesn't matter. We're going to play bishop g4. Capitalizing on the pinned bishop in e2. There are no checks for the white player available. If uh, white plays f3, bishop e3 is a beautiful way to close this line. There are no, There is no place to go for the white queen. The last line we're going to look at is bishop to c4 variation. So basically d4 take take bishop c5. Knight to b3 bishop to b6 and now bishop c4 we're not going to look at a4 a6 uh, a4 because you're going to play a6 and then whenever white does the next moves let's say knight c3 and bishop e2 whatever it's basically going to be the same setups the same patterns so there's nothing new uh, uh, that has to be done because a4 is a type of move that it usually will come at some point during the game so after bishop to c4 now what to do okay queen h4 Every time, remember, so you don't have to memorize moves, bishop e2 or bishop to c4, either way, there's this thing that you know that your opponent is one step away from castling, and 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 whereas because he has not developed the knight, the bishop, or this queen, that means the queen, the king is way too far from the idea of castling long side, so you can just transfer your pieces on the king side, and you have this attack. Castle, knight f6. It's a basically the same situation as the variation with bishop to e2, except the bishop is in c4, but that's actually worse because as i mentioned one of the first things i said during this video is that knight to e5 is going to be a move that comes with a tempo 
So knight to c3, for instance, knight to e5. Remember, this bishop is threatening nothing. The knight to e5 here is god. So the bishop now has to go. There is no square to go to. Well, d3 or bishop e2 doesn't make much difference. In e2 is protecting this diagonal a bit further, but it doesn't help. Knight f to g4 comes now. Threatening mate. Already no way to stop it, by the way. Two moves we're going to look at. One of them is h3. G3 gives a very similar scenario to uh, the earlier variation of this video. This move, h3 is met with knight f2. Haha. <laughs> there are three attackers to that square. So we've got tre threatening to take the queen. And uh, the queen can't really move away because you have a discovered check threat that is devastating. So after rook takes, bishop takes check, king moves, and now simply castle. Why is best move to be knight d4, the idea of going to f3 potentially, but there is nothing here already to be done. Yeah, you might argue maybe queen to f1, but it just does nothing because you're going to play the d pawn and then you're going to sacrifice in h3. So we'll, we'll see. Let's say knight d4, okay, d5. And that's it, you're going to play bishop h3. Knight f3, first take it. Bishop takes and now bishop takes. Pawn takes back, you got checkmate coming soon. And here, by the way, there was no way to avoid it. If you don't want to play knight d4, you want to play rather queen f1 to put more defense over these pawns. Okay, d6. The idea is to play f5, take the pawn in e5, or if we get taken, then you can take back the rook. Uh, I mean, take the pawn in e4. If white plays, let's say, g4, this doesn't work, obviously, because he can just take this for free. Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes. There's no compensation. The pawn in h3 is pinned, so that doesn't work. Nothing really stops you from playing f5. The white player is paralyzed. So what to do? Let's say white plays knight to d1, attacking a bishop. And he's got double attack over that, that bishop in f2. We bring the bishop back to b6. And after bishop to f4, continuing development, trying to reduce the initiative. Black plays knight to g6, double attack on the bishop. And, and after the bishop goes to h2. But let's see what happens if g3. Best move is bishop takes in h3. Ignoring the fact that our queen is under attack because then we can play the we can take the queen whilst the attack on this bishop and the attack on this bishop remain, meaning we're gonna be up material. So if the bishop does go to h2, now we take the pawn in e4. Position evaluated almost minus five. We threaten to take in h3 once again. Here there's absolutely nothing for the white player. Knight to c3 is met by simply capturing the pawn in c2. So you might, it just it really looks so much like a completely normal position. Queen c2, now rook c1, developing. But now queen to f5. And we're ready to swap stuff. The thing is, we're up three pawns. That is why we're winning. Even though it looks like the, we're not going to... Yeah, th th there is no checkmate happening soon. But look, if this position is not enough for you to win, then I might as well, I might as well recommend you stop watching this channel and go watch those videos that say how to always win in five moves. So if you see one of those videos, just click. You learn how to always win in five moves, yes. So the very last recap will be this one. I promise it's the last one. Bishop c5, knight b3, bishop back, and now bishop c4. Okay, immediate attack with queen h4, and after castle, knight f6, and after knight c3, the knight goes to e5 with a tempo, bishop e2, knight f to g4, and earlier we went through h3 and what happens next? What happens if instead white takes? Okay, knight takes back. We're still threatening the square h3 and we have the same thematic move in f2. What happens when white plays bishop to f4 protecting the square of checkmate? Well, you take here with the bishop. Obviously, if you take with the knight, then I don't know. White might have some crazy ideas like bishop g3. It's a bit annoying to meet. So rook takes, then you can take back with the queen, makes a four queens the bishop. So king h1, knight to h2. Boom! It's a beautiful move. Now here, obviously, rook taking bishop doesn't work because knight f3 ends the game. Bishop takes b uh, knight in h2 doesn't work because bishop g3 ends the game. The best move by white will be bishop to g5, sacrificing the bishop for the queen so that we don't have a discovered check. Okay, queen takes here. And obviously king can't take knight because queen h4 is made. So rook takes. And now bring the knight back to g4. And threaten this one. And the best move by white in this position is to give up the exchange. Queen f3 is the best move according to the engine. But now simply take, take and now castle. 
and you're winning. Knight to d5 with an attack on c7, nothing to worry about. Don't get too greedy though, our development isn't the best, so just play b6. And after knight goes to c7, rook to b8, and there's no attacks for white. Development, maybe rook e1, whatever, doesn't really matter too much. Play bishop to b7, you're up a pawn and the exchange. Now the idea is to play rook to c8. So if the knight goes back to d5, for example, then play rook b to e8 and threaten to swap everything. 